situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the king, kings were assembled, they passed by together. They saw it, and so they were marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Rear took hold upon them there, pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ship of Tarnish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. See now, I have read Psalms 48, 1 through 8. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing on us already. Let's go. Amen.
You can look out and see the dampness of the weather. You're standing on a miracle. Yes. God gives us miracles every single day. And sometimes we don't take knowledge of how good God is to yeah. us. That you need to know that every day you have breath, you're standing on a miracle. Yeah. Can we bow our heads as I do the invocation prayer? Father God, I know you're there. I know you hear us. We just need you to enter in. We need you to come to this place. And we need you to fill it with the Holy Spirit. We need you to guide us, to walk us, to cleanse us, to heal us. We need you, Father God. We can't stand here if it wasn't for you, Father God. So you as the potter, please mold us in the direction we need to go. Order our steps, Father God, for we know as long as we depend on you, there is nothing that can fail us. So, Father God, please, Pilgrim Baptist Church needs you, Father God. So I ask you to please anoint everyone in this church who is in the need of your touch, who is in need of your love, who is in need of your spirit, who is in need of everything that you can do to make your life a little better than yesterday. So, Father God, as we stand here as a miracle, as a child of you, Father God, we just need your ever-loving, lasting care. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Can we turn to the front of your um, bulletin for congregational hymns leaning on the everlasting arm? <laughs>
Um, before we go there, um, I know this Joe Brewster is not on the second shut-in list for the special prayer request, but he is at Overlook Hospital. So can y'all please keep that in mind as you say your prayers um, for Joe Brewster. And still then, keep my daughter in your prayers as on the 22nd would be the memorial service of her father. So please keep her in um, prayers, her newborn baby to keep the stress away from the baby so she can still be okay. Amen. So please keep everybody in prayers and mindful that everybody needs a prayer. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right, I will be reading the communication and announcements, but I will also take this time to welcome you if you are visiting Pilgrim, if you are returning to Pilgrim, if you've been here before, welcome you to our youth Sunday. So thank you for being here with us. For our announcements this morning, Bible study will be every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Dialing information will be emailed to participants and available on the church Facebook page. Pilgrim will be celebrating our 95th church anniversary. We should be excited. 95th anniversary. To God be the Lord. worship with you. We are combining this with our friends and families day. So please invite everyone that you know. We are here to worship and praise the Lord. So that will be Sunday, June 23rd during our morning service. Member assessments, additional dollar per year. Um, we also will be fellowshipping and having a barbecue after service. So please stay. Wear some comfortable shoes. Amen. Because we are here to praise the Lord. Um, chairpersons are myself and Lady if you guys have any questions. Also, please donate personal items, for example, deodorant, hairbrushes, hair combs, toothbrush, toothpaste, men's women's socks, undergarments, clothing to support the Urban League of Union County, um, return of prison inmates program. These items are collected third and fourth Sunday, and they are distributed to the Union County Urban League in Plainfield. Annual assessments can be paid in installments to the church. Um, final payment is due at the end of the year, and you guys can see all of our celebrations that we have listed. Also, to emphasize what Sister Wanda said, there are plenty of people on our sick and shut-in list. So I just encourage each and every one of you guys to not only read these names, but reach out to the people on this list. And if it is not listed, keep everybody in your prayers. There are so many people, so we will now continue the service. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We're grateful today that the Lord woke us up. Right on time. Amen. We're grateful today that even in the midst, as Sister Wanda said, that we can feel the rain, we can see the rain. And to all of that is a blessing unto us Amen. that God did not take us away, but God blessed us to see another day. Amen? Amen? I want to share with you the Bethel Baptist Church in Westfield, New Jersey, on June 15th is celebrating Juneteenth. There are a number of Juneteenth celebrations going on around the county. Uh, Bethel is extending the opportunity to come. And there'll be food, there'll be fun, heritage. And so again, on that particular day between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m., uh, the Bethel Baptist Church, which is located on Trinity Place in Westfield, will be sponsoring uh, a Juneteenth program. So you're uh, free to come and be part of that celebration with them. As well, again, uh, on our uh, bulletin, which is not there, on a sad note, I received a call uh, last night that Brother uh, Donald Nichols passed away. Uh, I do not know any details. As soon as I do, I will... Uh, pass them on to you. We want to be supportive of his family as they go through the time of grieving. Uh, Brother Nichols was faithful to this church through all that he went through. There was not a time, there was not a time that I asked Brother Nichols to do something that he did not try to make a way to do it. It is because of Brother Nichols that when you see 
uh, this donation for the Urban League. It is through Brother Nicholson's work for the Urban League that he counted it not robbery to ask us to be part of it. Amen. And I want to tell you that even though you don't know it, you blessed people that you didn't know. Amen. And you've given them new opportunity. You've let them know that there are people out there that care. So again, this will always be special to us in everything that we do. And so again, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to our events committee for all that they're doing. Again, we need you to reach out and to have people to come on Fourth Sunday to share with us on our church anniversary and family and friends day. Reach out to those that may have been members that are somewhere else that are in the area. Inspire them to come and be part of what God has done for 95 years in this church. Amen. It is our great importance that if you don't shout from the hills about what the Lord has done, that nobody will shout about it. And so again, we are grateful to each and every one of you. Encourage people to come out. Be mindful of all the things that are going on. Um, Sister Karina Allen is in uh, the Mount, it is the Mount View uh, Cemetery, uh, uh, nursing home in Box Hall over there. Continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for those that are sick and shut in. We don't know when our name may be on the list. We don't know what's going to happen. But if I got a witness here today that we ought to know that in what we pray for, others have already prayed for us. And so again, we want to be able to bless each and every one. Amen? Amen. As we go forward. So again, we're grateful to Sister Wanda for being our worship leader. We're grateful for each and every one of you to take part in what is going on. Amen? Amen. And I am going to do a scripture. And as we go through our altar prayer, Choir is going to come, and then I'm going to come back with uh, our introduction of our guest speaker for this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts, second chapter. And you're going to end up this morning with a double blessing. Amen? Amen. Go to verse 37. Acts 2nd chapter, verse 37. These words from the King James Version. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and unto all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this unto word generation. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Thus ends the reading of our scripture for today. May it take deep root in the souls of our heart.
opportunity to stand here at the throne of mercy. Thank you for everything that brought us to this moment. Thank you for getting us through our week this week, Father God. Somebody started off last week that didn't make it through. Somebody started off last week and did not know whether or not they were going to see this day. So we say thank you right now. Many things have happened to us along this path to this very moment. And you saw us through every single one of those things. So we stand here saying thank you right now, Father God. We thank you for the grace and mercy that has woke us up this morning. Put us in our right mind that we might make our way down to this tabernacle once again. To stand on this holy ground once again and worship in your name. Oh, Father God, we praise you today. We praise you for everything that you have done for us and continue to do. And for those things that we have not stepped into, we praise your name. We praise you for the help and strength that you have given us. We praise you for the mercy you have given us, even when we did not deserve it. We praise you right now. Oh, we praise you for the trials and tribulations. We praise you for the fires that we have walked through. We praise you for the hard stones we have been crushed up against. For the finest things that have been brought through those fires. Oh, sometimes we've got to be pushed up against a couple of rough stones to be sharpened up every now and then. So we say thank you right now, Father God. Oh, Father God, we stand here. And as we think about what's going on in this world, we look around and we see that it's very easy for those to become discouraged and disheartened. We know that there are so many things going on that are causing people to give up right now. Or they're turning to these lowercase g gods. They're turning to social media. They're turning to money. They're turning to the government. They're turning to everyone but you, Father God. Remind all these people right now, Father God, that those things are nothing but tools. Those things are nothing but tools. And you are the grand architect. That you hold all power and that nothing can be made, nothing can be fixed, nothing can be done without your power, Father God. We know that everything that happens is in your name. We know that everything that we walk through is in your name. So we stand here praising your name right now, Father God. Oh, right now, as I speak, somebody out there is thinking about giving up. Whatever that situation is that they're facing seems impossible. Whatever it is that they're looking at seems undoable. Oh, but Father God, we know that you specialize in the impossible. You specialize in the undoable. Yeah. You specialize in miracles, and they're praying for a miracle right now, Father God. But bless them. Bless them right now, Father God. Not only with whatever it is that they pray for, but bless them with your presence. Let them know that they are not walking alone in this world. Let them know that whatever trial and tribulation that they face, you are right there with them, Father God. Oh, the pressure cannot hold them. Cancer has no power. All oh, those bills are going to be paid. No, oh, whatever it might be, guilty verdicts may be raining down, but Father God, you hold all power. Nothing can be done without you. And whatever has been spoken will be done by you. So we say thank you right now, Father God. We submit ourselves humbly to your word and to your way. If it's not your will, do not allow us to go through it or to do it. But change us right now. Right now, Lord. Make us those humble servants we claim to be. Whatever isn't right, take it out. Whatever isn't holy, take it out. Whatever isn't right, take it out. Dismiss it all, Father God. That we can become the people that you want us to be. That we can be the end to the dearest to be so that we can walk out into a dying world and let them know that you are love, you are everything that they are looking for. Nothing holds power like you do, Father God. You hold everything. You do everything. And we are nothing without you. So we praise you right now. We say thank you right now for those miracles we're walking into right now. We ask that you just continue to hold us and keep us. Guide us, love us, and let your mercy rain down. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen.
praise while they were singing. I'm going to give you a minute to give praise right now. Raise our kids. 
One of the hardest things for us to do is to turn our kids over to schools. Schools that may be failing, teachers that don't care, principals that are prejudiced, and guidance counselors who don't even pick up a phone and call parents. But today we have somebody here who I believe will give us some insight and some information that as a student, you listen. As a parent, you listen. Take this information and use it wisely. So I want to introduce to you uh, Rhonda Small Waller, and she's coming, and she's uh, the guidance counselor at the Benjamin Franklin High School in the city of Baltimore. She's coming. She's speak to us. Hold on one second, Rhonda. We're going to get the choir to sing, and then you come up. And then, Pastor, told you last week, I, I got a few things I want to talk about which is going to go along with what Ron is going to bring. Say that. Hear the choir and hear uh, Sister Ron as she goes.
says that I know God is the Holy Ghost is in my spirit. Um, and I think that's why I was so nervous today when I like a part of me didn't want to come. And the reason that I didn't want to come is because I just know where I've been. And to be up here is such an honor. Because I have so much to talk about. You ask me a question about education, I'll give you a whole hour on what you need to do. Come on now. But I didn't know where to start. So I'm going to start right here with my little notes. So I wanted to say, I would like to thank Pastor Allen, the First Lady of Pilgrims Baptist Church, for giving me this opportunity to talk with you today. Just a little bit about my background, he touched on it a little bit. I was born in Jersey, but in Baltimore, they say New Jersey, <laughs> but it's Jersey. Um, grew up in Westfield, and then uh, I didn't realize when I was growing up how significant it was to grow up with both sides of your family in the same town. As a kid, I would always go somewhere but by the time I got back to my grandparents' house, yeah. they were notified that they seen me somewhere. <laughs> and always somewhere they say I shouldn't have been. In other words, there was always eyes yes, on yes, me. Yes, yes. Always. always. It didn't matter what side of the family came from, there was always eyes on me. Yes. So when I was growing up, I realized that, you know, we all know the phrase, it takes a village to raise children. Amen. It seemed like that is just in the past. But I'm here to tell you, the village is still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the age 12, my mother moved us to Central Jersey, uh, West Windsor Plainsboro to be exact. Um, I played sports, field hockey, basketball, and softball. I was trying to receive a school scholarship, but no one was looking at me. Well, I played well. I was in the news all the time, but no one was trying to give me a scholarship. My mother had to navigate those waters, and they were unfamiliar. Things weren't easy at all. <clears throat> there was no one to show us anything. But that was one of the main reasons why I became a school counselor. He says guidance counselor because that's an old term, but when we come to the new terms, it's called school counselor. Okay, so basically, when I became a school counselor, it was based off of all of the things I had been through. Yeah. I didn't want to touch, touch on it, but I think it's relevant. So, I'm recovering of 32 years clean and sober. Today in Baltimore, all you do when I walk in the front door, I smell weed. Yeah, yeah. It's like a common fragrance yeah, yeah. all day, every day. Yeah, yeah. And to recover and to become who I am today wasn't an easy, easy feat. I needed my family yeah. to almost turn on me, yeah, yeah. to push me away and not support so my eyes could be opened. But in the baseline of it all, God was always there. Always. So now that I moved from Jersey because I didn't end up in a facility in Maryland, I went to college in Maryland. And now that I'm a school counselor for 24 years, that's not an easy for you either. But a lot of people, when they hear that I counsel in Baltimore, they're like, oh my God, it must be bad. It's not. Yeah. I mean, you hear the craziness that goes on in the world, yeah, but right. kids are always kids. Yeah. That's right. It's the adults you got to deal with. Oh, right. You know, yeah. so the adults are the ones that kind of confuse a lot of things for our students. But being a school counselor, you got to know what you know. Come on now. On Friday, 
was the 13th and 13th celebration of our kids graduating. And I could just sit there and I saw the student that used to be a freshman that had no clue what they wanted to do or even if they was going to make it Come on now. walk across the stage. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Like, the feeling you get to watch the transformation, transformation of a kid that didn't know what they were going to do to actually go to college or going into the military or going into a trade or even just going to work yeah, yeah. is a blessing. A blessing. So we don't talk about it and we don't hear about it in the news about the transformation of our students. Mm. They go through a lot, yeah. but the first thing they got to do, they got to reach out. Yeah, yeah. They got to come into that office. Yeah, yeah. My door is always open. No matter what time I get here, I get be a little late, but it's okay. The door is always open. And I've seen so many kids who also lost their way. I've seen kids and students die. It's just the way of the world. And it weighs on you. But for parents out there, the first thing you need to do is be a part of their educational life. Amen. You gotta be a part of their journey. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone in the school system tell you no. Be persistent. You have to. It's so crazy because we had kids graduate and I've never seen a parent or a guardian until that day. That's four years. And you don't see the parent until the day that the kid celebrates. It's unfortunate. And then we had some kids that didn't have a parent or a guardian to even help them celebrate at all. So I would advise all parents, please, please, get to know your school counselor. Go into the building. Ask them what's going on. Ask about their grades. Ask about the graduation requirements. A lot of parents don't even know what that is. Find out where your kid, your kid stands. Know their grade point average, their GPA. Because when you know their GPA, you have at least a track of where they want to go. Yeah. They have options. When I was growing up, I didn't have, I'm not going to say I didn't have options, because I had my mother. I don't know about that, my mom's here. My mom is the reason why I got an academic scholarship to college. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for her, I don't know where I would be. Come on now. Because back then, if you didn't have a decent GPA, yeah, yeah. no one was looking at you. No one. They didn't even start looking at my sister until her SATs came back. Right. So since she had over a thousand on her SATs, that's when she got noticed. Yeah, yeah. But it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, yeah. You should be in the school telling them, telling those people, <laughs> like, you should be in the schools telling Tell those teachers what you're looking for and what you expect. Don't let them tell you. You need to be in the school telling them what you want out of their school system. So I'm going to go back to my notes because I think I just went off on a tangent. I apologize. So, um, one thing I would say always stay positive. Yeah, yeah. One thing I would say always keep your kids encouraged. So, also, like, me and my mom battle all the time about what's right, what's wrong, and what I should do, what I should not do, but I encourage you to please have conversations with your, with your kids. Um, I try, I have two kids, my daughter and my son. My daughter, I don't know if it's just that we bump heads, she's 22, um, and we battle back and forth in regards to where she should go. When she graduated with a, a 4.0 from high school, I just knew she was going to college. You couldn't tell me nothing. She was done. <laughs> it wasn't the case. It was the pandemic year. So I, I really believe that the pandemic year really uh, messed a lot of our students up emotionally. Yeah, yeah. But I knew she was going to college, but she told me she wasn't. I didn't know what to do. She took a gap year. If you don't know what a gap year is, a gap year means that they want to take a break yeah. from education. Yeah. That gap year turned into two gap years. And then to three. Well, um, she got into every HBCU. 
That's a historical black college. She got into Spelman, she got into Clark Atlanta, she got into Morgan State, she got into Bowie State, uh, she got into Ethnet, Florida A&M, she got into North Carolina A&T. She got into all of them but decided not to go to any of them. I was really upset, and like, as a parent, you know, we have these ideas, we have these visions that we want our kids to be at some place. What I learned from this experience is that I had to step back. Yeah, yeah. I had to let her make a choice. I didn't like the choice, but it was her choice to make. Yeah, man, man. Right now, she did, She went back to school. She went and got her paramedics license. She's a paramedic, and she drives around Baltimore City helping students, I mean, not students, but helping everyone out in the city. So she did go back, but it was on her terms. Now for my son, who is now 26 today, I knew he, well, I didn't know he was going to go to college, because you know, he was a little special. You know what I mean? I didn't know what was going to go with him, going with him. You know, he was very laid back. So I didn't anticipate him going to college, but I made him go for one year. He told me he didn't like it. So he came home. He ended up working for a year. And I didn't know what he was going to do either. Yeah. But once again, I had to step back yeah. as a parent. My son is now going on to his fourth year as an Air Force military man. Married with two beautiful children. So once again, it wasn't on my timeline as a parent. It was on his, but he's now in the Air Force and he's doing extremely well. And I'm super proud of him and happy birthday to him today as well. Um, I don't know if I really talked a lot about uh, anything else, but I just want to tell you that being a counselor of Baltimore City, I just have the privilege to basically once again, as I said, when I received the um, high, I mean, high school council award at their banquet, it's just a pleasure to serve. Yeah. We serve. Mm -hmm. From the moment I step into the office and to the moments after the office. Because they have not my real number, but they got that Google number, that Google Voice number, and they can call or text any time. You got to be able to prepare our students for the future. And it starts with the relationships you have. That's why they said that the village is still there. The village might look different than what we used to see. See, at my building, the village is the school. You got the counselor, the teachers. There's teachers that really care and go way beyond what they need to do. But as a parent, you gotta be locked in to find out who cares about your kid. Right, right. Because if you don't care, why should we care? We do, but not all school systems are like that, or even schools. And it varies from school to school, yeah, yeah. which is crazy, yeah, yeah. but it's the truth. You have to be invested in your kids' education. Yeah, not, not. That is your job, yeah, yeah. not ours. That's right. But we will help you yeah, through that. That's right, that's right. It's the village mentality. And when you see something wrong, you got to say something. So I don't know if it's been five or ten minutes. I don't know if I need to speak a little longer. But if you have any questions, I'm always available. Amen, amen. Thank you.
been blessed by God with the promise of the truth. And the truth is, it still keeps on flowing. When you fall short, he keeps on blessing you. Amen. When you don't do what you're supposed to do, he keeps on blessing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the truth of it is, the reason why people are still in some situations is because they have not recognized that God is an everlasting, blowing, blessing type of God. The promises through Jesus Christ and what he has done and what he is about to do. Your promise, your receiving of the Holy Spirit is more than just you. Some people think because you look good, because you got an education, because you got money, because you got some things, that God bless you and nobody else gets blessed. But I want to tell you today that, that God blesses everybody, even when you don't deserve it. That God blesses you, and the truth of it is that when we look back over our life, God has blessed us with more than what we really deserve to have got. It is to fill you up. God fills you up every day. Every day when you crack your eyes open, God has already supplied all your needs. And beyond your needs, God has given you more than what you can really use in your life. I said to you last week that you need to know what to do when God gives you a blessing. You, you need to know that uh, the overflow is beyond you. You think the pastor just keeps telling you, go to your closet, clean it out, go to your cupboards, clean it out. You, you got stuff in your closet, you just hold it on to it, and you ain't going to ever use it. That's your overflow, and your overflow can bless somebody that got no blessing. The responsibility that when you look at how God has blessed you, yeah, yeah. that then you ought to see if you can apply your overflow to everyone and everything about you. You see, it, it's that stream that keeps on flowing that, that we don't know how to let go so God can give us more in our life. You see, when you use anything that God gives you for the glory of God, is there a witness today? God will open up that window and pour out a blessing upon you that you have not room to receive. If I can tell you anything today, be not afraid of ever losing the stream when you use your own. If God allows this door to close, all you got to do is just look because he's opening another door for you. <laughs> People become afraid when they have to depart with the things that they have acquired. The Bible says that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom so, so let, let me tell you, uh, all that stuff you got in the closet, you ain't using. Come on now. <laughs> it ain't going with you to the cemetery. All they're going to do is divide it up anyway after you leave here. If you're not using it, use it to the glory of God and watch what God does with you and does for you with your overflow. The Bible says that there is no more mystery. Or it is no more secret what God can do. Sinners plunge beneath its flood will lose all their guilt and stain. You see, you didn't always have what you had. It was because somebody blessed you with their overflow. You know, you sang the song, we sang it in here. Somebody prayed for me. Had me. Oh, man, I took the time while 
they were praying for you. They put you in their overflow to make sure that you were blessed as well as they were blessed. Children, parents are praying for you that all that they have will overflow on you. And not only on you, but on your children's children. You see, when we use our overflow for the right things, all things will work together for the Lord. You see, there ought not be any starving people. There ought not be any naked people. There ought not be a lot of things if people would use their overflow. Says you lose your guilt and stay. Why not allow other people to lose their guilt and stay? If God has done something for you, if He's taken a sinner and He's changed you into a believer, why won't you let your overflow flow over on somebody else that wants to get rid of their guilt and stay? You see, the devil wants you to hold on to your guilt, and he wants you to hold on to your stay. But that's why the songwriter says, sin is plunged beneath its flood, when you lose all their guilt and stay. Well, when you make good use of the overflow, God can make good use of you. Let me say it one more time. When you make good use of your overflow, God can make good use of you. We ought to be good instruments of God in everything we do and how we do it. The, the song says, would you do service for Jesus, your king? There's power in the blood. It says that, that sinners plunge beneath its flood, lose all its death. There is a flood that flows from Emmanuel's land. Sinners that are above, uh, below that flood will get more than just the loss of their guilt and sin. That they will be coming, uh, those that receive the promise of God through Jesus Christ. That they will be able to do some things. The, the, the text is trying to tell us what shall we do with our overflow. But let me tell you that we ought to make good use of the steady stream that gives us power. With the hand that picks us up every day. If Jesus picks us up, then we ought to pick up our fellow man. If Jesus puts food on our table, we ought to feed the hungry. If he clothes us, we ought to clothe the naked. What do we do with this? Well, we got to stop being stingy about how we've been blessed. You see, you're blessed that you might bless somebody else. Well, we can't change the world without being part of the change. You know, you want to talk about the fact that black lives matter? Well, we need to tell our young men and our young women that black lives matter. Put down the guns. Stop killing one another. Stop killing the drugs in our neighborhood. Stop abusing our women. Stop abusing the elderly. We have to be part of the change. That this Holy Spirit has become, has come to your life. And it is about to change your life. And here is where you can say, if it can change me. Come on now. Uh, yes. Have I got anybody in here that's been changed by the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Mama tried to change you. Daddy tried to change you. Preacher tried to change you. All of the people, the judge, and everybody tried to change you. But have I got a true believer today? It was only by Jesus that I got changed. What will it do to the drug dealer on the street corner? Yeah, yeah. If it changed me, what will it do with the young men and the women that are out there gangbanging and fighting on the street corner? If it changed me, it can change a dying world. You know what, what it did and it's doing for you. Huh? I don't need you to tell me how it did it or what it did. Because the truth of it is, it'll be in your talk, it'll be in your walk, it'll be in how you serve him, it'll be on how you treat one another, because if he changed you and he's overflowed on you, you won't talk about nobody, you'll help them up out of their situation, you won't scandalize them, but you'll give them what God gave to you. Can I just put this in your life? Wouldn't you want the Holy Ghost to change the world 
that you live in right now? Wouldn't you want the Holy Ghost to fall on, on the people who are still allowing bombs to fall on other countries? Wouldn't you want it to drop on those that are in Congress and, and in the White House and cause them to be able to come together and take care of the people of our country? Well, wouldn't you want it to drop on teachers and principals and, and counselors in school so that our children will learn and become everything that they get? Don't you want it to drop on some student that they might come up with the simple fact of how to cure cancer? Don't you want it to fall on somebody that they'll come up with a source that we won't eat food and the food will kill us? If you allow the Holy Ghost to come out of you and to fall on other people, we can change the world that we live in. Yes, yes. Lastly, men, women, boys and girls want to be made whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know anybody, even gangbangers, even men and women in jail, often talk about if their life could be different. Uh -oh. You see, the truth of it is, we all want to be made whole. Amen. The reason why we're not whole, you see, you can go to your doctor, and the doctor can tell you, your heart is good, your mind is strong, your lungs are good, and all the rest of you is fine and well. I can't find nothing wrong with you. Everything about you, the doctor gives you a good bill of health. But the truth of it is, sin is lingering in all of us. Sin will always try to linger in us. The only thing that can get rid of sin is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the only thing that can make a man with a heart and heart take his heart and learn to love again. It's sin that causes us to be blind. I'm not talking about the physical, but I'm talking about the spiritual. You see, when we learn to see the good in each other, then we can promote the good in one another. You see, when we get rid of sin in our life, nothing will keep us from giving God glory and doing what God asks us to do. When we allow the Holy Spirit to come out of us, this overflow that happens on the year, that happens on the buck, that happens on the day, that happens on the hour, that happens on the minute, yes. that happens on the second, yes. that happens on the degree of Pentecost is what we need in our world today. We need those that believe in Jesus Christ. We need those that have been saved by the power of his blood. We need those that proclaim him as their Lord and their Savior to stand up and to let the dying world know that Jesus' blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, that sinners plunged beneath his blood will lose their guilt and stain. There's not a bragging about this. Peter, in what we read there, is not bragging about what Peter says, but he's talking about a change for the people around him. You see, stop talking about a of the people around you and do something to help their change. Yeah. You see, we ought to be more involved. You, you heard what I said. Parents, get all up in your children's stuff. Don't let your children tell you it's my business. You brought them in the world. You raised them in the world. You sustained them in the world. You want to be able to help them through whatever is going on. You see, when we look at this, just can't talk about a change without a change happening in you. You see, when the change happens in you, somebody will ask you the question, what happened to you? Why aren't you like you used to be? You see, the bottom line is Jeremiah says that, that I wanted to not say anything, but, but when the Lord God came down on me, it was like fire shut up in my bones. I can't stand around and allow the world to be the way it is. Peter was not who uh, who should uh, he should have been. You yeah. see, Peter had some faults of his own. I don't know about you, but I still got a few faults. 
promised that he would be right there. But Peter was the one that fell asleep on him. Peter jumped up trying to remedy the problem and he cut the soldier's ear off. It was Jesus that fixed Peter's problem. Y'all didn't get that. And it was Jesus that fixed Peter's problem. You see, if you're a witness today, you'll tell somebody, fix it, Jesus. Fix it right now for me. Peter, in all that he did, when Jesus was arrested, Peter had cut the man's ear off. And Jesus, in the midst of all his way to Calvary's cross, stopped for a few seconds and fixed the man's ear. And by fixing the man's ear, he fixed Peter's mess. Peter was the same one that said, Lord, I'll go wherever you go. But it's the same Peter that when they asked him, aren't you with the man called Jesus? It was Peter that denied him. Well, I want to tell you, we got to stop denying who Jesus is. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. He's food when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. My mother, when she forsakes me, my father, when he leaves me. He's air that I breathe. He's the ground I stand on. He's everything to me. You see, all we got to do is understand what we've got to do. You see, what we got to do is stop sitting down and stop standing up. All this was embarrassing mess that Jesus had to clean up. But it showed Peter in the flesh doing the best that he could with a literal sword of human power. You see, we can talk about people all we want, but we're just cutting them down. How about instead of talking about them, let's build them up. Instead of looking at what their situation is, how about jumping in and helping them out of their situation? Amen. Yes, when we look at what we should do, when the resurrected Jesus changed Peter's life, and when the power of the Holy Spirit had come down upon him, he did more uh, than just talk about it. Peter began to do something about it. Peter became one of those that stood tall and stood bold. It is Peter that's standing now in the proclamation of the people that are there. Don't you remember when they said, these men are drunk? Well, let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost will get me drunk, then I want to have that kind of Holy Ghost. And if it's the Holy Ghost that will let me stand before men, women, boys, and girls, that's the kind of drunk I want. And if it will help me to put food on somebody else's table, that's the kind of drunk I want. I want that thing that will cause me in my time of trouble to be lifted up. It, it caused me when I'm in a bad situation to know that all help is not lost. This is what Peter could do with the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, doing God's best for those around you is what God wants you to do. It's been said that in a moral uh, season of Christian work, the evangelists seek out the sinners. Jesus came seeking us out that there would not be, uh, that there would be a change in our life. So what do we do? What do we do, church? We got to start being the church that Jesus came for. We got to start being the change that Jesus started with. Well, I'm going to tell you the story. There was a man, and he got saved. He said to the Holy Spirit, he said, if you save me, I'll go preach wherever you say. The Holy Spirit saved this man. So the man went to a particular city. And in the city, he set up a tent out on the outskirts. On the outskirts was where they sold drugs. Prostitution and pimps were going on. He set up the tent. And when he got in the tent, there was nobody there but him. But he began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He began to tell them, if you come unto him, he can save you. If you give your life over to him, he can change you. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first night, nobody showed up. But he preached a magnificent sermon. On the second night, he started preaching again. Wow. And the prostitute and a pimp came in. Wow. The prostitute said, I don't want to be like this anymore. I don't want to sell myself. The pimp says, I'm tired of doing what I'm doing. Wow. And what the preacher said was, if you give your life to Jesus, if you turn yourself over to him, he will make you brand new. Yeah, yeah. Well, the prostitute and the pimp 
into the tent. And say, the man preached another magnificent sermon. On the fourth night, said a drug dealer heard what was going on. The drug dealer showed up, came to the altar, laid himself down, and say, here am I, Lord, change me. Said that on the fifth night, not only were the prostitutes, pimps, and drug dealers, there were alcoholics and drug addicts that showed up. On the sixth night, there is the minister that heard about what was going on. He called a meeting and he said to them, I'm losing money. So I'm not getting any money from drugs nor from prostitution. What is going on? 
on the flood. Let it fall on somebody else. That the Spirit of the Lord may encompass this whole world and watch what happens. Don't make it about you because you can't even take care of you. It's the Spirit that falls afresh on you. You can be in alliance here. The Spirit will fall fresh on you. You can be like the woman with the issue of blood and it'll fall on you. So today is the opportunity of life for any man, woman, boy, or girl to receive the promise of Jesus Christ which is the promise of the Holy Spirit. You don't gotta, you don't gotta do anything except come and give yourself unto Him. You see, that's what all we all had to do. None of us escape this situation. We better come. We better give our life unto Him. Any man, any woman, any boy, or girl that's here today, if you're not saved by the church, this is your opportunity today. Bind yourself in the spirit of Jesus Christ. And he promised he would always be there with you. Is there one today? Come on, boy, give it to me. Dr. 
Dr. Joseph Graves, those that were on the Zoom call, you remember that. Uh, Dr. Graves just received uh, the Genius Award from Liberty Science Center a couple of weeks ago. Amen. Amen. Now he's got probably 10 or 12 books out there. But he is a native of Western. And um, he is down, I don't know, he got such a long title, but he's at North Carolina A&T. And one of the things, uh, two of the things he said to me, or said in his speech, was he thanked his mother because they thought he was retarded. Say it again. Now, y'all, I don't know, I remember if my mom ever came here. But that would have been the last thing you should have said to my mom. God fear woman. She went to that school, went up one side and down the other. And when she got done, she said, Listen, there's nothing wrong with my son. You're just not challenging him to the level that he's at. Come on now. Same thing happened again in middle school. Uh, he was reading the book, The Crusades of Something. They were looking at him thinking he was just looking at pictures. Again. Now, he holds a couple of doctorates. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Holds a couple of doctorates, masters, bachelors. He is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the leading procurer of grant money for the uh, North Carolina A&T in the work that he does. And I keep saying that because they will look at our children and not know how to challenge them. Parents, Rhonda said it right, get in and don't pick up the phone. Make a person-to-person -person communication with them before school, during school, all through the year. Let them know that you care about your children. Let them know that you want the best for the children. And when you do that, they're going to give your child the very best. But if you don't fight for your child, no one is going to fight for them like you would. So again, thank you so much, Rhonda, for coming. And I should, I should say as well, that's Rhonda's uncle, Dr. Joseph Gray. That's his sister, my cousin Alice over there. Amen. Um, and, and I want to get him back, whether we do it through Zoom. Um, he was talking about some stuff that deals with how people uh, deal with our children. If they don't know about our children, they don't know how to deal with our children. Amen? Amen. And, and so, again, we want our children to be challenged as well. They are looking for, at, the, at North Carolina a and University, they are looking for black students that want to go in the medical field. They're looking for them, they're promoting that, they're looking, for scholarships out there. So please, if you know somebody, I, I got somebody that I know there at the school, we can get them in, and as well, my granddaughter, uh, Tasha Day, graduated from North Carolina A&T, soon to life, whatever that means, like my mom just said, oh, Lordy, you got through. But, but she graduated with high honors from there. So let's get our kids acclimated. Let's get our kids back in the church. The church is the mainstay for our community, for the village as well. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. Thank God for you. Give God another hand. If you want to make sure that we're traveling back down to Maryland, 
How many more days you got out here? Four days. Four, four, four days. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, officers. Up front, my tithes and the offering before we get ready to go. Please give the God that's so blessed. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Look around. Take somebody's hand. Wave. Put a smile on your face. Amen. Before the everlasting throne, may his love rest through and abide. His voice, man. 